Well, seeing as it is 7 p.m., we'll call this uh, May 16th uh, meeting of the Development Review Board to order. Uh, this evening, uh, we have present introducing board members from my right here. With Abby. Hi, Abby White. And on our Zoom platform, we have uh, Jean Leon. Hello, everyone. Michael Lazorczyk. Hello again. And Claire Rock. Hello. Okay, which uh, gives us a number of five, which is a quorum for this evening. Um, so we can proceed. Uh, I will turn this over briefly to Meredith for a overview of our remote meeting procedures and related questions. Okay. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to do our backup recording. Give me just a second. Our Zoom recording backup from recording in progress. Uh, Give me one second. I got to go adjust what we're seeing on the screen. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So I am going to share my screen for anybody watching at home via Orca Media. you okay so um anyone who is viewing tonight's development review board meeting via orca media you can participate in the meeting via the zoom platform using this link here you type that into your web browser or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and meeting id number um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org, and I will do my best to help you get in. Um, I don't think John's done this before. We don't have any members of the public on, but, but just in case somebody from um, watching at home decides to log in, if you do get on via Zoom, turning on your video is optional, and we ask that everyone attending please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. If somebody does log in, um, when I see log in, when there's a good break, we'll check and you know confirm who you are. We're assuming that you're going to want to speak on the only application that's on the meeting tonight. Um, alrighty, I'm just going to skip on through this stuff and just remind everyone that in the event the public is unable to access the meeting and I'd get notified via email and trying to get them logged in, the meeting will have to be continued to a time and place certain. All right, I'm gonna hand this back over to Rob. Okay, thank you, Meredith. So with that, I will um, accept a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. So moved. Motion by Abby. I'll second. Second by Jean. Okay, Abby, how do you vote? Yes. Claire, how do you vote? Yes. Michael? Yes. Jean? Yes. Rob, myself votes yes. Uh, we have an agenda. Um, yeah, we'll keep it brief. I have no real uh, substantive comments this evening. Um, we will discuss at the end. I did just receive notice that we likely will not have a meeting on um, first of June or the first meeting in June, June 6th. Um, so that's, that's news for us. And um, with that, we have um, to approve the minutes from April 4th meeting. However, it doesn't appear that we have the um, right amount of people that were in attendance at that meeting. So we will wait, like, since we don't have a meeting next month, should we just approve them? It's it's okay. I mean, it's just the minutes. The draft ones are up on the website and okay. the videos on the website. So okay. anybody who's really nitpicky about it, okay. it's not that they have a way to, to find out what happened at the meeting. I think we can wait to approve it until you've got. We'll wait to approve it until we have a quorum of those that were present. Okay, so on to the main item of the evening. Um, we have an application uh, for sketch plan. Uh, 
uh, a subdivision at 579 Gallison Hill Road. And um, I believe, John, we have one individual here to present on the application. Um, Meredith, do you want to give a very brief overview here before turning it over to John? Yeah, I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, so the application is for subdivision of a parcel on Gallison Hill Road into three parcels. Um, almost, I'm thinking, I think maybe we've had one of those since these regs took effect, but they may have all been two parcel subdivisions so far. Um, so this one's slightly different um, than what we've been dealing with before, but very, very similar. It's a fairly simple subdivision. Um, it's a little different in that your your more developable portions of the two kind of new quasi vacant parcels um, is more kind of it sort of wraps around um, the parcel that's going to be left with the current single family home. So there's a few little bits in red in the staff report about some items linked to that, but it's really it, it, it doesn't seem horribly complex compared to uh, what these regulations were originally drafted for, which is more of your large typical, you know, what people think of as a subdivision with new roads and big development. That's not what this is. It's just going to be three parcels. Um, and you can take a look in the staff report um, for where I see there might be some additional information for the final application, but there's not a whole lot of that either. That's what I got. Alrighty. Okay, well, I believe we have John on here from DeWolf Engineering, uh, so we'll just turn it right to you to give us a little summary of what's going on here. Okay, um, do you mind if I share my screen, folks? Please that would do. be great. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's look overview here. So, um, this is a ortho photo background showing the parcel kind of in um, with Gallison Hill Road. Um, this is going downhill and it's going downhill fairly steeply um, in this area, but this is the parcel overall. overall. Um, and it is in residential 9,000. So th there could be significantly, I mean, if you just look at it area wise, there could be significantly more lots, but, um, but it is, you know, fairly steep terrain, um, and you know, more lots would require building a, a roadway and other things. So, <clears throat> the property owners were looking for a um, simple way to subdivide the park uh, property. They, uh, the current intent is for them to retain parcel A, uh, build a new home for themselves. Um, and this is an existing barn behind the existing home, and they wanted to retain that existing barn. Uh, so they would retain parcel A, sell the existing home on parcel C, and sell undeveloped uh, the third parcel um, for sale, you know, just to um, reap a little uh, reward here uh, in selling a, a, a vacant parcel. Um, just uh, we'll note that um, there is a natural community layer um, that I've discussed with Meredith that just uh, encroaches slightly on this extreme uh, corner of, of the parcel, which is in an area that is really undevelopable anyway. Um, so I don't foresee any future development of these lots impacting that area. And I think that if you look at the staff report, Meredith uh, indicates that uh, you should be getting some more information from the Conservation Commission on that. Um, so the parcels are set up such that each parcel would have their own um, driveway and their own utility connections to the municipal sewer and water, which is available on Gallison Hill Road and in this residential 9000 district. Uh, if we look at a little bit um, closer in view, uh, and I guess I, there's a couple of things that Meredith highlighted in the in her staff report that I will probably be discussing. Um, one slight thing that I wanted to uh, touch base on, Meredith, is that I think that you said that you 
indicated that you believe that the barn was 10 feet from the parcel line or from the proposed parcel lines? Um, I, I, this is going to sound really awful, but I just checked in the packets that were prepped for me, and I don't actually have my staff report in front of me. Oh. <laughs> I have to pull it up on screen. So okay. I don't know what I said in the staff report right, right well, now. I don't anyways, know. <laughs> <laughs> always take everything I say with a grain of salt, first off. But, um, but anyway, the, the, um, the parcel lines are set up such that um, this building is more than 15 feet. Um, okay. so, so this, I am showing a 15 foot set setback line here. And then that brings up the other subject matter, um, which was um, in this district, the front setback is 20 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet. The side setbacks are 15, 15, 15, and the rear is 30. So if we look at parcel C, I'm showing 20 feet here. 15 feet on the sides and 30 feet um, on the rear line. And the, that line is set such that um, it is exactly 30 feet from the house. Um, and then you see that like there's a existing like porch and stair structure, which doesn't encroach into that. And it's my understanding that that's, that's allowed. Um, but then this is the setback that Meredith, I guess, wanted to bring to you folks' attention. And that I am showing 15 feet here. And the question is, is should that be 15 as a side setback or should that be 20 feet um, as a uh, extension of the front setback? I think you um, referred to it possibly as yeah and it's it's sort of a a point for the board to weigh here and sure. the, where you're getting that 10 feet from is so here's 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 the issue so when you first drafted this and when we first discussed about the subdivision mm -hmm. the side setbacks for res 9000 were 15 feet they just got changed effective may 5th side setbacks in res 9 are now 10 feet oh so that was that's why in the staff report I, I had to I, I evaluated this application, even though it came in in between when both both the old regs and these ones that were just adopted had, were supposed to be reviewed. I reviewed it all under the new regs because that's what will apply for the final application. So all the side setback boundaries can be adjusted in the final Understood. application to 10 feet. Thank you for explaining to me. Yep. <laughs> I, I just, sorry, it took me a minute to catch up to what was going on. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, we still have, like, like you said, the, these little jags here, it's a, it's an issue with the way the front setback is measured. It's re mm -hmm. measured in reference to the front yard. And technically neither of these parcels have a front yard because front yard is defined as in front of the front line of the house of the primary structure right so i mean that would be all of so, this well and really technically there's no primary structure really on that parcel at all right now right now correct. right so it's a and it's it seems weird to have it seems like it could be odd to have something way back here have to meet the front setback when it's nowhere near a road. Right. And so I, mean, I guess that goes to what what was the intent of a front setback? Is it to right. you know protect something from encroaching um, on the roadway? If that's the case, it seems like it wouldn't be germane or sensible to apply the front setback to this line, which is like a hundred feet or more back from the um, road. Yeah. And, and that's the going to the, what's the purpose of the front yard, you know, front setback. Part of it is also to have a um, sort of a neighborhood development that is consistent so that you don't have all of these houses some way up front, some way, way you know, to, to, to make sure that they aren't pushing right up close to the road, that you do have some level of front yard. Um, and so the when the regulations were rewritten in 2018, the different districts were actually surveyed to try and come up with setback requirements 
where at least I want to say it was 75 to 80 percent of the parcels existing in that district would meet the setbacks. So allowing, you know, <laughs> having this little stretch and the, the little stretches in the back behind parcel C have a, you know, 10 or 15 foot setback allowance isn't going to somehow make them vary greatly from a bunch of other parcels in the neighborhood. Right, and I, th I mean, one thing is, I th it would effectively make it so that you couldn't subdivide it as as is, because we couldn't maintain thirty feet plus twenty feet, um, and then you know, and separate those two structures onto two separate parcels. If that were, if this were to be called a twenty foot setback because I've only got 45, 46 feet between the two buildings. Well, what do you think, John? Could you, do you think that uh, you could have a side setback given, given that it's an interior line to a new subdivision um, for that rear line of lot, um, is that lot B? Well, yeah, it's uh, B and, wait. So the front here, B and A yeah. would both be Sort of the sides when they're there behind C. Right. That's what he's proposing. Yeah. So would you have a rear setback on one side of the line and a side setback on the other, or would they both be sides? So like what? for the I'm confused. <laughs> so parcel C, you have a setback, you know, between the house and the property line. Yep. Would that be rear yard or would that be side yard? This I'm showing is 30, assuming that that's the rear yeah. line for this parcel. So that's the, 30 feet set back there. And then the and other I'm side showing. of the line, I guess what's yeah. combination of what you're saying in the staff report, we're saying would be 10 feet because it doesn't really make sense to do a front yard site back if there's not a road, given that the regs sort of define the front yard set of setback as so many feet, people from the road, feet from the road. I mean, it makes sense to me. I think that, that makes Sarah sense. Or, uh, Jean or Michael, do you have any <laughs> thoughts on this? I'm I'm carefully examining this. I mean, I, I the setbacks look okay to me as uh, on the sketch. Now that that barn's gonna remain correct in the in the potentially future development will be right behind it as far as I correct know. that's okay. yes this is the existing barn which they would like to maintain okay. and they would like you can see this a more level area of the lot here than like a steep slope out front yeah. where they intend to um, build a new home um, this on this lot there's like ample room to uh, you know, build a structure, you could put one there, you could put one here, you know, there's, there's a lot of developable area on, on parcel B. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing any objections, John, here from the board, as far as like, how you have it proposed with, so you had, there. how you have it proposed with the sort of addition of the, you know, measurements in the new regs for the side yard right. setback, so I don't think we have an issue there unless. Okay. Can I ask one question? I don't have an issue. I think it makes sense. I was just curious, John, did you consider a, just a two parcel subdivision or is it just complicated by the fact that they want to maintain that what's essentially parcel C to sell that off as a separate house and you would just come up with two bizarre of a parcel format? Uh, well, you know, it was all, we considered a number of um, configurations and I, uh, the owners settled on three lots because, you know, it could, would um, be a good, um, first off, they wanted to um, maintain the barn and build a new home. Um, second, they wanted to, uh, you know, get some income so that they could, um, you know, roll that into the developing the, the home site for themselves. 
um, and, and, and make a little uh, extra money. And to, you know, only, only two lots would um, minimize their, uh, their gain. And then, you know, they ideally would have liked to have done four or, or five lots, but then they would have to, um, you know, basically we couldn't do it without building a road. And, you know, that would be more upfront cost for them. So the, the, the three lots seem to be um, the threading the needle for them uh, in as far as how they wanted to develop the property. Uh, and you, you know, the three dri driveways all um, meet the uh, standards, meet the separations between uh, the existing driveways and the proposed driveways. Um, each lot would have their own utility connections. Uh, so there would be no shared utilities or driveways, you know, making the, the lots less complicated and therefore hopefully more marketable. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a good compromise. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess the you, you mentioned the, the shared shared driveways and the spacing, um, which you know I don't want to come off as having any opinions either way on this, but just to make sure that we're checking the boxes in the you know in the in the regs here. Um, you know, it seems like there's a leaning of language in the regs regs for us to sort of encourage shared access. Um, you know, driveways and minimize the curb cuts onto arterial streets. Um, and, um, you know, maybe you don't have too much information on that now if you didn't get too much time to review the staff, staff report. Um, but, um, you know, it just seems like, you know, maybe some sort of sort of analysis as to, you know, shared driveway versus not shared driveway, um, extra curb cut on the street, um, you know, might be worth you know, pulling together, you know, for the for the final application. Okay. Unless you have any more info on that now. Um, just kind of, if you want to pull it up and discuss it now, we can. But if you feel like you're not prepared, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, I I guess that I would um, prefer to review the regs and re respond if that's okay. Um, yeah, it's, it, it seems like an issue that's one of those things where it's like we're stuck between, uh, you know, regs written for like a 20 lot subdivision, you know, and a three lot subdivision and at what, what aspects of that on this scale do we, you know, adhere to and what um, just doesn't make sense. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, during the final application, we'd be sort of just like looking for that, that analysis as the regs are, regs are written there. Um, are there more? Should I continue sharing my screen, or should, more questions or comments? Uh, wanting to talk about this plan that I have in front of me here. Just so you know, I think Mary just came onto the meeting. Okay. I just let her in. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. Uh, so we have John on from DeWolf and he's been giving a presentation to the board on, um, on your project. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, I tried to go in with a link from the email that was sent to me and I was able to get in through your email finally. Okay. So I'm sorry I'm late. That, that's okay. It's okay. We're glad you're here now. Thank you very much. Good. So, John, did you have any more of your presentation? Sorry, we kind of jumped back and forth, but we think we took care of the two of the major 
issues in the staff report and you can keep going if you'd like or we can just no, I, I think that that pretty well um, sums up what the um, the Gomes family wishes to do with the property uh, the the three lot subdivision with you know um, separate utilities uh, and I don't think that I have anything else to add I think that um, you know I I have reviewed Meredith's staff report and will respond um, in the final application to all the um, areas she's highlighted, um, requesting you know further information on. But um, if if you don't have any, if the board doesn't have any more questions, I think uh, I I'm all set. But I'm I'm happy to answer any additional questions if there are any. Uh, it looks like Claire has her hand raised. Hi, Claire. Hi. Uh, um, thank you for sharing your screen and then sharing the information. I, I guess I just wanted to kind of echo um, some of the board's discussion regarding the um, the setback there with the barn and, and do agree that that it makes the most sense to consider that a side yard setback rather than a front yard setback. Um, the other area, I guess, I was that was already um, kind of uh, identified. Yeah, was like the number of um, driveways in that short span of the road there, and I guess just seeking some confirmation on um, that there would be, I guess, that the house currently appears to have like a horseshoe driveway, and just confirming that that other um, kind of where the horseshoe would kind of come out on the lower side of the hill, that that would be abandoned and just confirming it kind of looks like maybe that was an old garage, but maybe it's a porch now. And so I just wanted to get some confirmation that the other half of that driveway would be abandoned and kind of what the plans were around kind of reverting that. So there wouldn't be any kind of confusion there. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So you, you're correct. There, this is kind of a horseshoe shaped, I believe that this like gray shaded area is pavement, um, but then this is, is gravel here. And if you see, look at the contours, this existing driveway um, is very steep um, the, as it goes down here. And it's, it's steep and narrow. And it, it, according to Mary, the owner, the, the, um, they basically only use that as a one way out um, now. But the, um, Yes, the intent would be for this not to be shared because they would, in order to make the new drive to the this lot work, there, there would be, um, you know, some fairly extensive earthwork required to make a new drive, which meets the B71 uh, B trans driveway standard, uh, you know, coming back off the road at the proper slopes and then having a, a, a much gentler grade than that existing drive which is why I'm showing it kind of looping around to the side to develop some length to have a, a better grade on the driveway. But anyways, to answer your question, yes, we're, uh, I'm, I've discussed with Mary like abandoning this portion of the existing loop road and then just making sort of a, turning this into a hammerhead instead so that you could pull in back around and then go back out this, the same driveway. And so again, what that would end up having is that each property has its own driveway. You don't have to um, consider, you know, who's paying for plowing, who's paying for maintenance. Um, everybody would be responsible for their own uh, driveways and they wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, coming to agreement on cost sharing of, maintenance so. thank you it, john the driveway for lot c would would probably be similar to the one on a uh, lot b like is that what you mean by hammerhead yes so like okay. um yes so this you know it would come up and you I'm showing like abandoning the gravel at this point and then adding you know gravel here so that it would be a hammerhead shape. So you could pull in 
uh, forward that way, back up that way, and then drives out or, or vice versa, you know, um, pull in here, back up there, and then go back out the uh, existing driveway. Thanks. Similar to, you know, this kind of, all of them would, I'm showing is, is um, <laughs> Not a lot of variety there, is there? You know, we're, we're all looking at <laughs> different hammerhead configurations. Right. Um, where are the, uh, just point out sort of like the utility connections, or I guess you have a. Yeah, so, um, you know, in considering the, you know, and, and the, this is, uh, you know, what am I trying? These are conceptual. You know, nobody's yeah. necessarily proposing these locations and utility connections. But if you were to put a, and that's a fairly large footprint house. If you were to put a house here, um, you could have gravity sewer um, connected to the existing um, sewer main in the street, and a, um, you know, and a sewer and a water line, um, which would meet the uh, separation distances between the sewer and the and and the water service lines. Similarly, over here, you could put a house here and have a gravity sewer line connected um, to the existing sewer main and uh, your own private water service to the municipal line, uh, which would meet the separation requirements between the, um, those utilities. And you know, uh, it would it would meet all the city and state requirements for the utility uh, locations, and you wouldn't have to have pump stations or in any of the properties. Yeah, I mean the one kind of piece of the regs that has come up, and I guess you'll see it in the staff report, is the requirement for underground electric lines. Yes, and I'm not showing those, um, but uh, yeah, that, that certainly can be done. Uh, trying to see where the power looks like you got. Here, there's there's a utility pole here, so the utilities are on this side of this. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. This side of the street. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't show the overhead, but that there there is overhead utility there, and then so. I would imagine that they would come off of this. It would be very easy to come off of this pole for this lot. Yeah. Um, and this lot would probably come off of this pole and come up the right away a bit. And before it then came up probably parallel to the water line. It's like the time we found that it'd be kind of a, you know, an issue is when it's on the other side of the street and we've tried to shy away from, uh, you know, boring underneath the street. Right. Satisfy right. that. So I think you should be good there. Yes, they're fortunate here in that it is on their side of the street. Yeah. Um, that's all I have. Um, I think that there's some comments in there that, you know, we don't necessarily need to get through everything. You're going to, you know, review it um, and come back with a, you know, complete application at some point. Board members have any other questions or comments or topics of discussion? This will be uh, so the conservation commission is going to look at like, look at this as well. Yes. Um, so that's I, I believe it's on their agenda for their meeting um, this this week next week. It's, yeah. I, I put it in the staff report when their their standard meeting is, um, and so this has been forwarded to them. They just they they couldn't hold a special meeting to review it before tonight's meeting here for the development review board um so they will be reviewing this sketch plan application and giving their comments on it and i think the the plan is to go forward from there based on what their comments are um you know if they if they don't feel like they need to see it again when it comes back for final as long as the same you know the same concept um the same general plan is used for the final application then we'll go from there. They just, they haven't, I haven't gotten official comments from them outside of what's in the packet about them having a tentative identification of what this natural 
area is, this natural community is. Um, and so we'll we'll learn more before the, the applicant um, and I will learn more after the Conservation Commission meets. Sounds like a good plan. If I can just add one more thing, you know, I, I didn't have this um, plan up when I discussed it previously, but you can see that the area where that the natural community uh, intersects with the property is in this like really acute angle, uh, which is uh, com completely within the setback setback line, and you know it's a super steep area, so it there is no reason for you know the the owner or the potential owner of this uh, this uh, property to ever do anything there because there's really nothing you can do with that um, portion of the lot. That's all I wanted to add. Thanks, John. Uh, this is Claire. Um, I was uh, just looking over a Meredith staff report and the mention of a landscaping plan. And I guess I just throw out there the suggestion um, for uh, consideration of um, retaining vegetation um, along Gallison Hill. So as you're kind of coming up, up the road, um, uh, it looks like there's some larger trees in the area of uh, some of the proposed driveways um, and, uh, and just putting it out there as far as kind of consideration of uh, either a landscaping plan um, for screening or kind of maintenance of any of that kind of uh, mature vegetation that are on those sites. That's a good, good comment, Claire. Thank you. Um, well, without any further questions, I guess we could. John, could you stop your share screen just so that we can make sure I can see everybody all at once to make sure there aren't any other questions? Thank you. It just makes it a little easier. <laughs> um, that we can also make sure, see if Mary wanted to say anything in closing as well. Yeah. Mary, uh, do you have any anything you would like to add? Um, no, I don't. Thank you. Ready. Thank you for coming out. Well, Happy thank cheers. you. I'm sorry again that I got here so late. I kept drawing and finally it dawned on me to go to Meredith's email. I guess this is why there's two meetings. You get one to practice and then uh, the real the real one on the record is uh, you know, the next time around. So we'll be good. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. Um, Okay, well, thank you very much. I think that's it. I don't know that we need to close any hearings or anything like that because we're not on the record. Mm. Right, right. Well, um, um, so John and Mary, you'll get a copy of the minutes from tonight's meeting. That's sort of your report from the sketch plan. Um, and if you would like to, we can also set a meeting to discuss. But I think that the staff report probably does a pretty good layout of what should go into the final application and then what you heard tonight. So if you want to meet with me between now and submitting the final application, you can. If you don't feel like you need to, you don't have to. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Meredith, and, and thank you all. Uh, can I for... ask one quick question before sure. the applicant jumps off? And this is from Meredith. On, on 3506E, the utility services? Yep. Uh, because I'm, I'm guessing... Well, I mean, I don't want to guess, but I'm presuming they're not going to put an underground conduit if they don't need primary underground. Like if they can just pull a secondary off the poles, then I just want to make sure we're keep telling the applicant the right information because I don't want them digging trenches and putting in conduit for underground electric service that they may not need. Yep. Yeah, so, no, and that's the, the this that's one of the thank you, Michael. Um, so this is one of those provisions, and this is for, for John and, and Mary to know as well. When we've had these small subdivision applications, um, it's it's the, the board has a history of saying that you don't necessarily have to um, run 
the lines underground the entire way. It, usually that has more to do with um, running from across the street. Um, but here with, especially with um, some of the slopes you've got on parcel A, um, it might be worth just looking at it, like I said in the staff report, to investigate to see what kind of you know distance and and how far underground you would need to go, um, and what that that price comparison is, and whether there's you know if there's any notice of ledge in there, things like that to to make the case that running even those individual connectors underground just doesn't make sense to run them a long way. Um, but you know just investigate it a little bit reach out to the the utility company um and see what they're gonna what they what the price differential is um because in some cases it's it's easier in some cases it's not especially with that really sloped parcel does that make sense it does yes. i can uh assist mary in deciding how to, how to um how to develop that okay great um, yeah, that's that 3506E1 that's a little, <laughs> has been a little troublesome along the, the last yeah. couple of years yep. for subdivisions. So the more information you can provide, the better. All right. Thank Alrighty. you. Uh, thank you very much. So board members, I guess we have no meeting on June 6th. Um, and so the, our next regularly scheduled meeting would be on the uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't write it down on here. Uh, um, the 20th. Yes. 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 Yeah. Monday, June 20th would be the next regularly scheduled meeting. OK. Um, OK. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Did you before before the board adjourned? Did you want to oh, discuss the uh, discuss in person versus remote discussion? Um. So, yeah. just John and and Mary. Um, yeah. You can sign off at this point unless you had any further questions for the board. Um, they're going to deal with some sort of administrative stuff first before they adjourn. All right. Thank you. See you later, folks. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Um, it can just be sort of an informal yeah, poll. Yeah, good to have an informal discussion. What do folks think with kind of this in-person format? Um, I guess maybe I could jumpstart the discussion. I, as, a, as a chairperson, I will say that it's much easier to have everyone here in person uh, not be doing this uh, hybrid format. But on the other hand, I also understand that folks have, uh, you know, various commitments and uh, whatnot that make it, um, you know, much easier to be in attendance and us easier to get a quorum if folks have a remote option. Um, and so that's kind of like where I'm at on, uh, you know, where we're moving forward with this. And um, also COVID rates are also are still pretty high. So I don't, rec you know, would, don't want to make anyone come if they don't feel comfortable either. Um, but um, those are my thoughts. I'm interested in yours as we move forward. If any changes need to be made to our, our process and, um, what do folks think? Um, I can jump in. I, I think that with the, the rates in Washington County high, I think we're, it's probably smart to keep hybrid as an option yeah. so that people can feel as safe as possible. If, you know, when it, if and when it drops down to medium or down to low, then I think that's, I'm open to being in person. Yeah. Well, and I mean, just to throw this out here, my first thought would be to try to transition board members to more in person before trying to take away the standard Zoom option. We haven't pulled, you know, the, the thought was that once we got a sense of where board members were leaning um, and Kate, you know, rates and hospitalizations went down again a little bit we would be polling a bunch of the applicants we've had over the last couple of years to see what they would be comfortable with um, and and what they liked or didn't like about the hybrid so that we would get some information from our our applicants um, before we made any 
any real final decisions on how we were going to go, but we definitely wanted to have the discussion with board members first. Right. Yeah, I think for me, it's just too convenient to be remotely, but <laughs> when I'm told to come in, I'll come in. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that concerned about, you know, I mean, I'll do respect to everybody else. I'm not that concerned about the, the COVID thing. I'll get the other booster and I, I'm going to assume that no one's going to show up with symptoms. I mean, I'm just going to trust everyone else. But yeah, it's just too easy for me to roll straight from work into the online thing and go home. So same, same here. I feel the same. I mean, it, uh, if if I have to come in person, I will. I mean, no, yeah. no sweat. Easy. But um, I have a double screen here. I have one screen with all the regs and the agendas. It's it's just a convenience for me right now. And and if I would have had to go in today, I would have been late. So coming home and and turning on my you know, having it right there pop up my screen was just a. I also need to get a laptop, a new laptop, because I'm going to come in person. But, but that's just personal conveniences. But if I have to come in for sure, definitely. I mean, I don't mind. Just got to adjust. You got used to this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, part of it, it's just, it's the what type of application and what's the agenda like, you know, if like yeah. there's. You know, 20 people in the room, uh, you know, public commenting and another 20 on, you know, online and it's a contentious thing like, uh, yeah, I think it would if I were running the meeting, it'd be a lot easier to have a quorum of board members you know, in the in the room to keep things moving. Uh, but a meeting like tonight, obviously, it's like, well, yeah, like, I'm very much, you know, okay with doing it this way. It's no big, you know, it's no big deal. So um, I don't know, that's just information to consider. Yeah. depending on the application of what's what's easier for you know for me and i what i think sort of makes things run a little bit smoother well and the the other thing to think about is that deliberative sessions if we're trying to do private deliberative session deliberative discussions that gets really tricky because we have to get rid of orca and all be on one laptop to continue to do the zoom anybody who's here in person um so you know, if we continue the hybrid option to make deliberations easier, it's a question of whether or not we want to start doing those deliberations in public, motions or not. Um, if that would be a way to, to yeah. smooth that aspect out, at least for the non really controversial yeah. ones. I don't know. It's like you said, it's sort of a balance between the, the easier applications and the more contentious applications. Potentially. Yeah. We'll see. Any thoughts, Claire? I am of similar mind to my other virtual <laughs> colleagues. Um, but also understand, you know, that um that it does help kind of facilitate a probably a, a an easier discussion when people are in public. Um I, you know, I am an alternate, so I don't come as often as you all do. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy to do what the majority of the board feels is best for the process. And it did also, as a side note, I was just looking on the, the website, and I did see. I think my term is up this month. Is it this month? Oh, I think it's in May of twenty-two. Okay, I guess. I just, if it is the case, I'm happy to stay on as an alternate with the recognition that I do have other work commitments where I'm not able to kind of come all the time. Um, but I'm happy to continue unless you feel like you would like a more active alternate. <laughs> uh, thank you for looking that up, Claire. I need to put in my reminders for everybody. Who else, is there anybody else on there whose term is up as May? Yeah, my, my my term and Claire's expired on uh, May first. They expired May first. Oh, so did mine. Term expires May first, twenty twenty two. So did mine. Mary. Okay, and Jean. I guess it was good right. thing we were making a decision tonight. Yeah, it's a really good thing. <laughs> so we've, we've had stuff like this happen before. It's okay. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing. Sorry about that. Uh, it's just one of those. All right. So yeah, if the three of you are interested in. Continuing, we'll need new applications. Good thing we don't have a meeting June 6th. Um, all right. 
So, Claire, Rob. Send the application out. Gene, and I will also double check that that actually matches my chart. It should. So that was just my not having the reminder set in my calendar. I will send out an email with the link to the application to get we reappointed. Have, do we still have vacancies? One, yes. Yeah, we, we still have, have one, one vacancy. vacancy. Yep. Okay. We have one vacancy for a regular seat. Um, and, you know, the, the, the hope is to maybe try and find somebody um, comfortable taking one of the a leadership spot if possible i know that because we're gonna have to re-elect chair and vice chair in august um and rob took it and kevin actually took his spot sort of in a we couldn't get anybody else to take the spots <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's gonna need to sort of have a little discussion again about yep. about the chair vice chair positions okay. and if anyone has any one that they think might be interested in serving on the board um feel free to give them you know Email them, copy me, do an introduction. I'm happy to give them a little rundown. Um, and that's not just, so the DRB has one vacancy. Design Review Committee has two vacancies. The Historic Preservation Commission has like three vacancies. So anybody that might have some extra time on their hands, send them my way, please. Or just, you know, civic mindedness with no, no outlet for it. <laughs> um, please send them my way. Time with yeah. them. Okay. You should do something like, don't just comment on front porch forum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just go to like once a month only, you know. Go to once a month. It takes that much longer to get applications. We'll go to two months a month, but if we don't have a board, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. going to have to step up. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, all right. Looks like I have homework. Um, and everybody else has a little bit of a break. Thank you for, for giving me some input, giving us all some input on the meeting type. That's appreciated. Absolutely. All right. So anyone have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So move. Motion by Jean and second. I'll second that. It's Claire, Claire. Second by Claire. I was going to say it sounded like <laughs> Catherine for a second. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Gene, how do you vote? Yes. Michael? Yes. Claire? Yes. Abby? Yes. And Rob is yes. Meeting is adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night.